Mr. Truck here with the exciting news. Yes, I finally bought my new truck, and I'm here at Brighton Ford, three miles from my house. This is where I bought like six or seven vehicles, three trucks, three cars. The cars are for my wife. I don't buy cars. I had four finalists. I had a Colorado. I had a Ranger, a Bighorn Ram, and the Ford F-150. And I'll give you some explanation on why I ended up picking the Ford F-150. But that's what I got, and I got an EcoBoost 10 speed. My son bought his Fusion here. My RFD TV producer bought his F-150 here. Cody Christian makes your trailer smoother ride. Isolates between the truck and the trailer. So your trailer doesn't fill the truck, the truck doesn't fill the trailer. Your horses have a better ride, your cargo has a better ride, you have a better ride in the truck. So this is where we go. At the end of the year, I get all the big discounts. This one even had hail discounts, so I got to fix some hail on it. But I got it cheap. I got it for zero interest on 72 months. It's so exciting. This is the kind of deal I want. It's got a tax write-off now. So it helps me in so many ways. But I did have to trade off my F-250, which I love that truck. I've had it for six years. I love that truck. I had a flatbed on it. had air suspension. Anyway, this is Maynard Morrison. He is my guy. He's the guy I've been buying from for, I don't know, since 2006, way back when. How's it going, Maynard? It's doing good. How you doing? It's, it's easy to do business with you. you just, I, asked, I told you what I wanted for my trade. I told you what I wanted to buy the truck for, and that's all there was to it. And it's cool. And I can, you know, I'm, I'm a journalist. I can buy anywhere in the country, but I always come back here to Brighton Ford because it makes sense for me. And I, I love it. I love the service here. They just keep remodeling the place. But this is so cool. So anything new and exciting? Any secrets you can tell me about these new trucks? Well, basically, you just tell me, and then I do what you tell me. So it makes it pretty easy. Well, that, that's the way it should be, right? <laughs> Ah, it's kind of like how marriage is, you know. But anyway, that's uh, that's great. I got my new truck. We're going to just do a few more things, and I'm out of here. But now my, my fuel mileage went up seven miles per gallon because of what I did. My taxes went down. Everything's a wonderful. It's a wonderful day here on Christmas Eve at the Brighton Ford. But, yeah, if you ever come near this place, go ask for Maynard because it is so cool. Great selection, and they are big on the Internet. You know me. I'm on the Internet all the time. So I'll tell you more about how I made my decision. So come back. Bottom line, the reason I bought the F-150 over the other three trucks I was looking at is it's got the highest torque in the class, the highest towing, the highest payload, the best MPG, and a 36-gallon tank. Last time I'll see these guys together. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> my poor trucks, my babies. But this is the replacement. Brand new 2018 XLT EcoBoost. That's my new call name, EcoBoost. Okay, finally, I get to drive my new truck with a trailer. I had to wait till I got a thousand miles on it. And I got 1,200 miles on it, so I put my High Boy project truck, 1971 F-250. The High Boy, the one with the divorce transfer case, is our load. We're gonna go weigh it. We're gonna do some fuel mileage loops, and you see how this thing pulls. Now, first thing I got to do is put it in tow haul mode. It's in my dash. It's off of this drive mode on the end of the shifter stem. This is so cool. In my 10 speed with my 3.5 eco boost yep we're gonna go gosh a couple hundred miles try a few things out on this now I've got my lights on I always like to run my lights that tells me if a cord came unplugged on the trailer and this we're hoping to be around 10,000 pounds we're also going to get a tongue load and a payload weight so we'll see if we're right in the limits because I know the limits of this truck but uh Stay with us. Don't have towing mirrors on this. I wanted to. I probably will replace them with towing mirrors. But we have the standard mirror. And this trailer is fender to fender, eight and a half feet wide. But uh, it's a flatbed, so the flatbed is inside the fenders, which gives me pretty good visibility. I can see all the way to the end of the trailer, which is what I wanted. And my big F-250 high boy barely fits on here. I didn't take the winch off. That takes up some space, too. But I'm in tow haul mode. Now, what I've learned with this too, before told me about this, I can put it in sport mode. And in sport mode, I'll get more power. Like if I'm climbing up the Goblin or some kind of a hill, then I can put it in sport mode. But coming down the hill, I have to put it back in tow haul mode because the tow haul mode does not work in sport mode. So I've learned all these things about my new truck. We're pretty level. We've got a weight distributing hitch on here, Gen Y hitch. So it's distribution's good. We're not swaying. We've got a pretty 
bring a load up, sure, I'll be getting, or getting close to 10,000 pounds. That's the goal. The same will to actually tow 12,800. But then I couldn't have anybody in the cab but me. That's not the payload. The payload's only 1,677. That's how these half tons are, and all of them are that way. You don't have enough payload to actually get to that max trader number unless you have no passengers at all. And with this, I was going to put a four wheeler in the back, but I wanted the room for my cousins. I got Chuck and Betty with me. And with between the three of us, we're close to maximum payload with if we have a thousand pounds of tongue weight. To find all that out, a big adventure. It's amazing this truck, this new truck, weighs 5,640 with an empty truck and it's 1,580. The empty weight of the truck is 5,640. Now the high boy on the back, that 250, it weighs in at 5,060, so just about a 600 pound, 600 pound difference between the new truck and the big old 250 high boy, 1971. So that is interesting. And we're towing a little over 10,000 pounds, which is my project truck. And we're gonna go out and do a couple hundred miles, see what kind of fuel mileage I get off of the truck's computer. Later on, we'll do a, a, a tank to tank and get more accurate numbers, but they're not too far off in the old days they were. But now they're getting really good at, at, at telling us our fuel mileage. Yes, it's a crew cab with the EcoBoost and the 10-speed and the short bed, so it's only a five and a half foot bed. But as always, I'm using my Gen Y hitch, my adjustable hitch, with the weight distributing hitch, of course. On a half ton, you definitely need to do that. And I've also got my new project truck, which I don't know how new it is. It's a 1971 F-250, but it is a high boy, which means it's got a divorce transfer case, three drive shafts in there, and it's got a factory lift. I think they were originally called High Rage or something, but then that's the marketing name was always high boy on these. It's got a 360, but I've got my, I moved my hood ornament over to this, my red flying longhorn bull. Got to keep him with us. But yeah, I've got, as always, my 22-foot tilt trailer. So we loaded this on here. Got everything tied on. And this is our ballast for our truck. But yeah, we're getting our numbers figured out for this. Well, we're heading out on 76. I'm going to get a fuel mileage uh, estimate on this. And see what it does with 10,460 pounds on there, which is what my trailer ballast and two people in the truck. We're cranking out some tests here with this new 150 that I just bought last month. But when I drove this, and, and we're going to get some tank to tank comparisons later on where I do a long run across country, then I'll get some exact fuel mileage. But now we're going off the computer, which has been really good. Uh, when I tested it empty at 75 miles an hour on this same road, cruise control on, was running about uh, 1800 RPM at 75 miles an hour. And I was getting, turn all these right buttons on here, get my cruise on. I was getting 22 and a half miles to the gallon, which is rated like 23 on the highway. And uh, let me set this back up to. That Ford doesn't fly off the back of the trailer. But anyway, that's 22 and a half, which is very good. And you know, we're at altitude. We're going close to 5,000 pounds, 5,000 feet, uh, 5,000 feet right now. So at that altitude, 22 and a half is very good empty truck. 1,800 RPM. Now the sweet spot's about 1,800 and below diesel or gas. That's where they get the best fuel mileage, unless you just drive like super snow. So that was at 75 miles an hour with the cruise. And then I took it down to 65 miles an hour with the cruise on. And I was running about 1,600 RPM. And I got 23.3 miles to the gallon, which is really cool if I could ever drive that slow. And then I took it down to 55, just for grins. A few times when I may have to do that, like in California or something. But anyway at 55 miles an hour with the cruise control i've got um 24 and a half at 1400 rpm because that's quite a bit slower rpm but that's nice about this ecoboost this 3.5 liter twin turbo is it has a torque curve of a diesel it starts off 
right off the bat. Most gas engines have to be almost wide open to have much torque. Well, this one starts off with torque, and like a diesel, which I really appreciate. So, we're going to try it now with the trailer with 10,460 pounds. Let's see what it comes to. And uh, is that something rolled over in a ditch there? What is that? Is that a truck? Always something to see. 76, even though oh, there's that full traffic. Off. Somebody took a camper almost the side of the road. It's a trailer camp. But um, so now, so I'm getting like 10.1, which is excellent. 10,460 pounds on the back. But this rascal will get up to 75. That's right around 71 miles an hour. Let me get it to 75. We'll let these dogs run. I've got it in tow haul mode, so I'll. Um, just get above 70 miles an hour, which something Andre Smirnoff showed me that once you get above 70, tow haul mode doesn't really affect fuel mileage. At slower speeds, it would because you run at higher RPMs, but not up here. Okay, I'm at 75. Now I'm going to reset it, go through a few slide hills, and see what we come up with. But anyway, this truck has got hill damage about $5,500 of the hill damage, and that's what I was looking for. I wanted to get to trucks that I could you know, get a big discount. My other truck, my 250, which I actually sold, I uh, got, uh, actually got this, this is my truck that I replaced it with, but they actually gave me 22000 for it, which is amazing. I was wanting to keep it, maybe buy it in an F-150 or a Colorado or a Ranger just for a runaround vehicle, but I only put 45,000 miles on that. 2012 F-250, and I thought, crap, I get a new truck, I have that there, may only be 5,000 miles a year, which I can't have 22,000 just sitting here, doing nothing, so I sold it to the dealer, and this one, and if I would have paid cash for that, or just took the normal rate, interest rate, I could have got it, with all the discounts, and all the rebates from Ford, for 35,600, now that's cheap, of course, 5,500 of that is hail damage, which I think I can get it fixed for about a thousand bucks. My other truck had hail damage, we got it fixed for a little bit, seventeen hundred or whatever the wheel came to. But anyway, so that's what I wanted. I wanted the hail damage one. So this one, I but I got all hung up on that zero interest. I got zero interest for seventy-two months, which I waited an extra month to get that. Probably could have found the exact truck I wanted with six seats, where this is five seats, where they had a six and a half foot bed, and I could have been a thirteen thousand pounds trailer. This one is 12,800, so it's close with the five and a half foot bed, the 20 inch tires, the max tow package, all things you have to do to get the weight to that point. But anyway, so this, I ended up getting some, I got the discounts, I got a whole back, I got all the great discounts at Bright Ford there, and I got the uh, uh, zero interest, which was a big hang up. I probably should have just kind of spent more time calculating. So I might have lost a little bit by going to zero interest, but it's just one of those things. So I ended up buying this now. It was a, a $53,555 Moroni sticker. That was full retail. After some of the discounts, they normally give you with packages. And that's with shipping and all that. So down from $53,555 down to right under $41,000. So I ended up paying for this with my zero interest. So, you know, you always have a lot of buyer's remorse, at least I do, on these big ticket items. But I might have saved it, you know, another thousand or so if I would have went with the interest rate, you know, not the zero. But zero is so easy to calculate. You know, you just take every month you got left, and that's what it is. That payoff, I can calculate the payoff. I don't have to worry about APR or any of that stuff. So I always like that zero interest. And of course, this is a tax deduction. But I can actually, this is ready to tow. 12,800 and the payload is in the door, it shows 16,077. And Ford told me it was closer to 18 when I was having them give me the numbers because it's so hard to look these trucks up. You know, Chevy has it in the door sticker now, the 1500s on the 2019. And Ram, you look up the VIN number on their website, it tells you exactly what that truck is rated to tow and payload and all that. But with Ford, you can use the Ford RV Trader Towing Guide and get really close with that. If you follow all the little extra numbers they give you that you got to look up at the bottom of the page, but I wish they had a little more convenient to figure out these numbers, but uh, so I'm calculating out all the traders I pull with, and most I usually pull with is 10,000, 
in the same way as my RV, but I only can't haul as many people. And that's the big difference between an F-150 and an F-250. Gas engine in both is they'll end up real close to the same towing package. I mean, all the 250s I looked at with the 6, with the 6 6.2 like I had, gas engine V8, 373 rear end was 12500 Well, this with a 355 rear end, which you have to have to get that max tow package. I thought it was kind of odd. If you go to the Coyote, the 5 liter, you can go to 373 and get a better package on the 5 liter. But this 3.5 out tows the 5 liter for weight numbers. So that's why I went different. Of course, I love the Coyote, but you can't beat these EcoBoost at altitude where I live. It's got all the power in the world. But anyway, so that's where I am 12,800 pounds. And I'm not sure I'm payload. It's somewhere between 1677 and 1800 payload. So anyway. So you got to do a lot of calculating if you know what kind of trailer you tow and all that. So when I do go to, say, a 12,800-pound trailer, I can only have me in the truck. And maybe I'll have to go on a diet to fit all the numbers. But, uh, yeah, we used to, got used to towing six people and the four-wheeler in the back and the trailer. Well, we can't do that now. So I guess we'll get more four-wheelers so we have a reason to have a second truck to follow us around. My sons go with me and my daughters and all the fun stuff. And my cousins, I'm going to take them up and get lost in the mountains. But anyway, <laughs> that's how that goes. But, yeah, I love this truck, and I'm having fun with it. And, you know, last truck I kept almost six years, and I'm thinking maybe, you know, if that new hybrid comes out and it gets a million miles a gallon, maybe I'll trade in three years. You never know. You always have all these decisions to make. But, you know, it saved me a lot of tax. It was one of the biggest reasons I had to do it. Because GBW on this, GBW R is 7,000. You know, to be 6,000 to write off a truck if you have enough income on the IRS for businesses. So it saved me money. My goodness, I got 12, I got 22,000 out of my old truck, which amazed me. Of course, that's a little extra for the aluminum flatbed, a little extra for the air suspension on it. But I was happy all the way around with the deal. I just probably would have been wiser to not take the zero interest, but oh well. So, as much as I'd like to have a three-quarter ton and F-250 again, or, you know, 2,500, whatever it was, it, uh, you know, this is my car. My, my wife passed away, and her, my daughter crashed the car, so the car went away, so I don't have a car, so I have to get a really good gas mileage. She used this, you know, to go to funerals and hospitals and nursing homes and all that stuff the old people get to do, and that's part of the decision process, too. Yeah, three quarter ten. I could have hauled more. I could have you know, hauled more payload, more people, and I'll miss that. So now we'll do some adjustments to make this work. But this is fun to drive. You put this in sport mode, and it's a race car. It flat out flies. But anyway, yeah, this this is uh, it was a tough decision. All in the last six months, I looked at hail damage trucks. I saw a Nissan Titan H uh, XD that had a diesel in it with hail damage. It could have got for thirty thousand dollars, and that was a steal. But I wasn't ready to buy it back in you know, August or whatever that was. And then I looked seriously at the Colorado. I thought that would be awesome to park at Walmart and get a bit of fuel mileage, which is not that much better. That's the thing. These full-size trucks can get really close to what a mid-size truck gets for fuel mileage. And those mid-size almost have the same, you know, in some instances, the same payload and trailer towing. It's amazing how that works out. Uh, unless you get the, you know, the bigger engines in it. So that's part of it. And then I wanted the Ranger, and he wasn't going to come out, you know, until January, so I couldn't do that. I needed to buy it in December. And then when the Ram came out, they're all new 2019-1500. I was all excited. They had made so many cool changes to that, and the Bighorn, when I was looking at it, which would be equivalent to an XLT, this is the volume leader for Ford, and the Bighorn's a volume leader for Ram, and I really liked that truck with the Hemi. I don't know if I'm sure about the e-torque or not, but it, it didn't get the same fuel mileage that this EcoBoost in the Ford does. And the payload was a little lower, and then actually the, it was the uh, trader towing capacity was a little lower. So, you know, there's so many factors to put in to making something work, and uh, it, it takes a lot of calculating, going to dealerships and checking it all out. I bought a lot of vehicles from Brighton because I've always got the deal I asked for. Sometimes I use the X-Plan with Ford and a few other things, but I've got about three cars there, <laughs> three trucks there, and, you know, I've got some friends of mine buy from there, which makes me a hundred bucks whenever somebody I send there. That's, that's cool. 
<laughs> I got to do that about a hundred times a month and not have something. But anyway, um, that's how I narrowed my choice down. There were four trucks in my last list, and I wanted hail damage too because I know that I can get you know get it fixed a lot cheaper than a discount. They give you there's an insurance company where we is. So all that was factored in, and that's the truck I have. I'll get the, the, the hail damage off the hood and the fenders pretty soon. And then, you know, I'm going to put a gooseneck ball in the back, even though it's a five and a half foot bed. I can do the extensions, pull some gooseneck trailers, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, probably try to get the weather guard mats inside. They're drillless mud flaps. I like those. Maybe a tile cover sometime. But I definitely think I'm going to get, these mirrors are remarkable for this kind of a tractor flatbed. You can see where the fenders are. And I got good visibility. I don't think the RV is going to be that way. It's eight and a half feet wide, almost to the outside walls. Where this, you know, is eight and a half feet wide on the fenders, and probably seven feet wide in between the fenders. So with this, and these have spotter mirrors because they don't have the bliss, all that uh, detecting systems that Ford has with cameras. So then you don't have the bliss. Then you get to the spotter mirrors, which I like spotter mirrors, but we will see. I will pull my eight and a half foot RV trailer and we'll see if those spotter mirrors help enough where I feel safe or if I'm going to have to replace these mirrors with some toy mirrors. And I can get factor toy mirrors or, or very close to it replacements. And then I'll have my toy mirrors. So that's the things I didn't get when I wanted. I should have bought a month earlier and gotten the a six and a half foot bed, the toy mirrors, and six seating. But I didn't. So here I am. Still need a tax right off. And that guy is awfully close. I think he's right off my tip of my trailer. But that's another bad thing about these kind of mirrors is that right mirror says objects appear smaller than they really are. Well, that doesn't help me. Can't quite tell where that truck is back there. Where toy mirrors don't have that problem. It's the same on both sides, which I really like for backing up to a trailer. You can see on both sides, it's all the same. It's not this side's like, you know, miniature. You can't really see enough detail out of it. This side's a full size mirror, so that might be one of the biggest reasons I get the toy mirrors. I hate that object appears smaller than they really are. You know, how the heck do you judge that? But anyway, wait a minute, did that little Toyota pull back over there? He didn't like it behind me? Well, this truck, the EPA rates it at 23 miles a gallon on a highway. 17 miles down the city at 19 combined. It's very close to what I'm doing now. We are toying with it. And it's very interesting. This is a 10 speed automatic, so there's three overdrives. When I was driving this truck empty on the same road, you know, I was running uh, 22 and a half miles an hour, 1800 RPM. And now, of course, when we're climbing the hill, the downshifts, so I'm in tow home mode. The same flat ground I did empty, it actually was running 1800 RPM, loaded or empty, which is amazing. The only time it you know, comes out of that 10th gear, it goes down to 8th on a hill. It's pretty amazing, and uh, Ford does that really well, especially their diesels and their super duties. I mean, it goes to overdrive as fast as it can. It's a 6th gear almost all the time on the heavy days. That's what they are, 6 speeds. But this one now we've done, it looks like it's going to be a 66 mile loop. And we're averaging 8.3, which is very, very similar to what my F250 with that 6.2 gas engine did. Very similar. Sometimes it might get to 9 miles to the This, you know, is only a 66 mile loop. It's all we had times for today. And it, uh, it's about what you expect out of a gas engine. Pulling 10,460 pounds in 8.3 miles to the big one. But they handled the trader well, cornered well, did the last of it to do well. We got to wait this muting hitch from Gen Y and that, you know, stabilized the trader. We didn't have any sway. Brake controller worked great. They've got a great factory brake controller. I just wish the controls were up one more notch than they used to be when they put that pro trailer assist. But anyway, that looks like our report for now. For this drive, as always, I am taking my Tucson Trader Pressure 
system on here, tire pressure system. It shows me the temperature of the tires. And then it'll show me the air pressure. There's a voltage. And next will be the tire pressure. There's what my tire pressure is. I ran them all up to about oh, 100 to 105. And they're fluctuating a little bit from the sun. But that is too cool. I use this whenever I'm towing trailers. It's Tucson tire pressure monitoring. There you go. There's the pressure of my tires. And these are set to go up to 110. They're 14 ply.